Praise the Lord, everybody. There we go. Amen. Can we stand to our feet and clap our hands to the Lord? Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift. Come on, go ahead and lift up a high praise this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. It feels so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to someone next to you? Amen. Fist bump them. Give them a virtual handshake. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Good to see the Bryans. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we serve a good God. He's faithful. He's always on time. Sometimes we don't like it. Uh, that he waits so long to show up, but he's always on time. Amen. But I feel like God wants to ease some burdens this morning. You may have come in this morning with a heaviness, with a struggle, with a fight, not knowing how you're going to make it to the next day. But this morning, I feel like there's relief available in the house. But that relief's only going to come if you can receive it. God can't give relief to someone who's not willing to receive it. And I have found in my experience that the best way to receive something from God is just to lift up my hands and say, God, whatever you've got, I want it. So I wonder if we could just do that this morning as we move into our praise and worship and say, Lord, whatever you've got this morning, I receive it. Lord, I'm going to take it. I'm going to grab a hold of it. I'm going to walk with it, Jesus. I want what you got. Come on and lift him up right now. Let's praise his holy name.
lift up that name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. He's everything you need Him to be this morning. Hallelujah. He is anything and He is everything that you could ever need Him to be this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There is a breaking forth in your praise. Amen. I know sometimes it does. You don't always feel it. But when you can push forth that praise unto our Savior, I don't care what you feel, something is happening. Your praises is shaking something. You might not feel it, but it's moving something. Hallelujah. Let's just do it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, even if you don't feel it, I love you, Lord. God, I know you're working it out for my good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not going to be in this season forever, but I'm coming out. This Red Sea is going to part. I'm going over this mountain. I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Somebody needs to tell themselves this morning, I'm going to make it. Amen. Our Savior is going to carry you through because He's faithful. Amen. If God has ever failed you, lift your hand. Anybody? You mean to tell me His record is that good? You mean to tell me He has never lost? Why would I put my faith in another? When my Savior is never lost. And I'm thankful it's not dependent upon me. If His goodness was dependent upon my goodness, we'd be in a world of trouble. But He's just good. That's who He is. Amen. And He's faithful. Could we put our miracle opportunities up on the screen this morning? There are a couple of needs I want to bring to your attention. We want to make sure that we continue to pray for Brother and Sister Fontenot. They're in need of recovery. Um, we just need God to touch them. Um, and we're the body of Christ, and we want to make sure we're lifting up our brothers and sisters. So when you find yourself in prayer, make sure you're lifting up the font nose. Also, we want to take Sister Hunt before the throne this morning, and I want to take a moment to do that. She's still struggling with double pneumonia. Her breaths are, are, are difficult to come by, and uh, she needs a touch from the Lord. And I believe that God, through our prayers, can touch her right now. Right? I, I've read in the Bible where Jesus healed someone long distance. And I also read where Jesus said, greater things will we do. So I believe we can pray right now and Sister Hunt will be touched where she is right now. Amen. So can we lift her up right now, Lord Jesus? We plead your blood over our sister, Sister Rachel. Lord, we command healing over her body. Lord, we command the moisture to leave her lungs. We command the pneumonia to leave in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we're believing in the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we're believing in your word right now. We're standing upon it. Hallelujah. Lord, touch her even now as we pray. God, we believe it and we thank you for it. Why don't we praise him for doing it? God, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We want to make sure that we're taking time to pray for one another. 
I believe there's no greater blessing than when we lift someone else up to the Lord. We may have our own issues, but when we lift up someone else, there's something special about that to the Lord. Amen. So let's make sure we are lifting up our brothers and sisters. Amen. If you've got a need this morning and you would like prayer, please come to the front. Amen. I believe that when we lay hands on the sick, they shall, re shall recover. Anybody still believe that word? It's in the book, right? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So if you've got a need, we want to invite you to come down. But church, we've got a big long list, but we serve a great big God. So let's take these needs before the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we believe you're a healer. God, minister on behalf of every name written upon this, this board right now. Touch them, heal them, deliver in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody all over this building, let's lift up the body. You're in the atmosphere. Your presence is here. I feel you. Desperate for you, Lord. I'm thirsty. I need more. I need your power, Lord. I need you. I feel you.
too hard for our God. He said, if you ask anything in his name, he will do it. I'm telling you, there's nothing, there's nothing that our God cannot do. Sing it, is there in his name? There's nothing too hard. Come on, don't let this word pass you by. You better lift your hands and receive it. Come on, somebody grab a hold of that promise right now. That's exactly the word you needed to hear this morning. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Oh, yes, I receive it, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, come on. Come on, somebody needs to receive that word right now. Someone's been broken, been hurting. Someone hasn't been able to move forward at all, but the word was just given on your behalf. It's time for you to move forward because God's already prepared the way. Come on, lift those hands one more time. Let's receive his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus.
Someone just needs to yield to the Holy Ghost right now. Just yield to the Spirit of God in this place right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. may seem circumstantial that you're in this place this morning, but I believe the word of the Lord that there's healing for you. It may be physical, it may be emotional, it may be spiritual, but there's healing in the house this morning. Amen. There's nothing out of God's reach this morning. I wonder if we could just take one more moment before we move forward. Let's just love him. Hallelujah. Maybe just express your need to him this morning. Jesus, I need you. I need that healing, Lord. It's been too long since I felt your touch, Jesus. It's been too long since I felt your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Church, we are so blessed. I'm telling you, there are people in this world that are convinced that this does not happen anymore. There are people in this world, they're convinced that what we experience, that what we just experienced, was only available in the Bible days. That's not available to us, and I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed, I'm so privileged to be able to sit in a service and feel the presence of God and to know that He realizes where I am and to know that the Holy Ghost is available to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. He is so faithful. Hallelujah. If you love the Lord, you can be seated this morning. Hallelujah. God is good. Somebody say God is good. Amen. I agree. Amen. We've got several announcements. We've got a whole lot going on at the Apostolic Church. And that's a... Amen. This Thursday at 1 o'clock, we have our ladies' Bible study. You want to contact Sister Carr for location and details on that. Um, this... Thursday as well in the evening time is all church prayer. Somebody say all church prayer. Amen. Make sure you're here at 7 o'clock in the sanctuary for all church prayer. Amen. That's an important thing. If anything's important in the church, it's all church prayer. Amen. And if I can be here, I want to make sure I'm a part of that. So make sure you're here for that. Um, we have the Fall in Love Marriage Day with Pastor and Sister Carr. Uh, that's going to be Saturday, October 10th at 1 to 4 p.m. You want to mark your calendar. Saturday, October 10th, uh, there will be uh, breakout sessions and joint sessions and then an ice cream social. That will probably be wonderful, I imagine. Amen. That's uh, Saturday, October 10th. Make sure you RSVP with the Beersis if you plan on participating in that. Uh, tonight, after our evening service, we have our new member welcome reception. Uh, there's going to be a dessert and a meet and greet. So uh, for all our new members, if you've been here uh, within the past year, you became a member of the Apostolic Church, please come and join us in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, we'll have a great time together. That's tonight following service. Also, somebody say battle cry. Battle cry. Amen. Battle cry is coming up. Amen. We're less than a month away from battle cry. Amen. Raise your hand if you've ever been a part of battle cry. Amen. That's a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. I believe this probably our 12th or 13th battle cry. And uh, every year it's just phenomenal. It is a youth event, but we want everybody in the church to show up. Amen. You're only as young as you feel. And I feel like I'm about 19 still, so I'm going to be at battle cry. 
October uh, 16th, Friday night, amen, and uh, I'm going to support our young people, so make sure you're here for that. Mark your calendar. Young people, there will be an afterburner following Battle Cry at the skating rink. Uh, TAC ladies, ages 12 and up, uh, there's going to be a lunch fellowship with uh, shops, crafting, and uh, you can sell your clothes, amen. So uh, if you're interested in that, that is Saturday, October 17th. Uh, contact Sister Barrier for more information. Amen. God's been good to us, hasn't he? Amen. Anybody believe he's got more in store for us this morning? Amen. Why don't you love the Lord this morning? Let's give him a high praise. Hallelujah. Amen. What a great atmosphere. Amen. Here in the house of the Lord. Amen. As the Spirit of God is showing up and blessing His people in a great way. And we are uh, about to do something very important this morning and take some time to dedicate some precious children. Amen. Unto the Lord. <laughs> amen. They have ants in their pants and, and do the booga dance and wiggle and jiggle all over the place as, as babies do. Amen. If Sister Bradshaw would join us. On the front row, I would appreciate that. You can, if you want, you can leave Max with Grandma for a little bit. We're going to be bringing him up in a second, and so we're taking the time this morning to dedicate to the Lord these precious kids: Maximus Irving Bradshaw, Harper and Nicole Frazier, Salem Shaban Mackenzie Frazier. And we're also dedicating their parents. And the reason we dedicate babies is it does a couple things. Number one, it allows us to thank God for them publicly in front of the entire congregation. It gives us, as parents, the opportunity to publicly declare before everybody that I am making an intention and a commitment to raise our child up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And it will be a moment, as parents, you will be able to return to over and over and over again. I'm saying, God, I dedicated them to you. I thanked you for blessing me with their life, and I gave them back to you. And I'm trusting you with them. And also, what I'd like to do is realizing the emphasis and the importance of family and child rearing is it gives us a chance as family to gather around someone that we're going to support and encourage and love and strengthen them as well to help them and make a commitment that we're going to do our part in all this. Psalms 127 says, Children are a reward from the Lord. They're a reward from the Lord. Now, they may not always feel like they're a reward from the Lord. <laughs> but the Word of God is true. They are a reward from the Lord. And every bit of modern day research confirms what the scripture has been saying for thousands of years. Children are the product of their environment. And Max and Harper and Salem will become what you parents and you family put into them and instill in them and help them become. For if they grow up to be individuals of wisdom, integrity. They grow up to be faithful, kind and caring and persistent, to press on no matter what life brings because you as their parents and family and friends help instill those qualities in them. Some of you probably heard this saying before children learn what they live. If they live with criticism, they learn to condemn. They live with hostility they learn to fight. If children live with ridicule, they learn to be shy. They live with shame, they learn to be guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, they learn to be patient. They live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If a child lives with praise, they learn to appreciate. And if a child lives with fairness, they learn justice. They live in their home with security. They learn to have faith in others and faith in God. If they live with approval, they will understand that they are something valuable 
in this life. The children live with acceptance and friendship. They will learn to find love wherever they go. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 7 tells us this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. These commandments I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Parents, impress them on your children. Impress them. This is the New Living Translation. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, and when you lie down and when you get up. See, our job to each and every one of us here as parents is to impress the law of God and the love of God into our children. King James says it this way, teach them diligently. And that word diligently means to pierce intensely. Don't just touch them with it. Don't just tap them with it. But it means to rear back and with everything that the Word of God has to offer. With all your might and strength, you put it into them so nobody can pull it back out. And what parents live is what gets down in the heart of a child. It's our actions, our behaviors, our, our attitude, our spirit. That's what impresses them. It's what you live that changes them. Without a doubt, every single parent will leave an impression on their child. The question is, is the impression a good one? Is the impression a good one? And here, these two groups of parents have the wonderful opportunity this morning to make a decision. God, I'm going to do my best to follow after what Proverbs 22 says. Train up a child. And the way he should go. And when he was old, he will not depart from it. That word train is the process of verbally instructing. Sometimes moms will feel like they're a broken record. Pick it up. Stop. Don't do that. Pick that up. Yes, no. And on and on and on and on. Verbally instructing. But then modeling with behavior. And then guiding them so they can accomplish the task. If you don't live it, you can't model it. If you don't live it, you can't teach it. Because what you do will speak so much louder than what you say. Children are experts at picking up hypocrisy. They're experts. They, they, they notice that you'll tell them to do something that you won't do. They'll hear you profess something they know you don't believe. They'll watch you act one way around certain people and then see you act a completely different way at home. And that's not just for parents sitting on this front row this morning. But I'm taking this opportunity to speak to their family and their friends that are here this morning. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. Not just a celebration. May I follow what I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. You are here because there is something great God is wanting to do in these children. And it just may be you that makes the lasting impression in their life that they will need in that moment of difficulty uh, where they don't feel like they can press on. Uh, they're going to look back at an uncle or an aunt uh, or, or a grandpa or a grandma and say they would have done this. Uh, I watched them live it. Uh, I listened to them profess it. Uh, I know it can be done. Yea, I may not be able to see uh, how it's going to transpire, but I know that I know. Amen. My mama, my daddy, my aunt and my uncle lived it. There are many people that sit on these pews this morning that look back uh, at an extended family member in their life that made the difference in them. That's why they sit here today with a heart full of faith, determination, and persistence. Because you made an impression upon them. To train them. Jonathan and Amanda must be the ones to teach and train and impress Max. And Bailey, as difficult as it is, <laughs> you must be the one 
to teach and train Harper in Salem. It's okay. We got a little bit of time. Give her what she wants. Give her a Dr. Pepper. Give her a soda. She wants water. She wants Lisa. Lisa, help us out. It's all right. We're all family. Oh, there you go. See, Brian's trying to figure out how is Lisa the answer to every problem? <laughs> oh. The three of you, John, the who's not here, must be the ones that model for them how to treat others. Your families must model it for them, how to respect. Model for them how to worship. Model for them repentance. Let them hear you say the words, baby, I'm sorry. Let them hear you pray at an altar and ask God to wash you with his blood. Ask God to cleanse you and, and purify you, for there's none that is perfect, no, not one. And what better lesson to teach them about the mercy of God than to hear you as parents repent. You must be the ones that model for them prayer. Let them hear you pray. Let them see you pray. Let them see your commitment to pre-service prayer. Let them see you model kindness and love and mercy and grace. There's a word in that proverb, I'll be honest with you, I wish would be left out. And it's simply this, train up a child in the way they should go. I wish that word wasn't there. Because word, that word should is not a definite. It's not an absolute. It's a, a maybe. Because we all know as parents that our kids will one day make up their own mind. And that, my friend, is where prayer and trust in God comes in. That's why we take this time this morning to dedicate them to God. Because only... He, only we can do so much, and then they make their own choice. But God picks up where we leave off. God steps in when they step out. God helps out when we feel helpless, and God continues to work when our work. Some grandparents will argue with me on this. is never done. <laughs> I'd like for the parents... Come and stand if you would. If you please bring that. I want you to stand just right here. Stand up close a little bit. That's good right there. And I want the family members and the friends. Austin, put that right there. And make it face them. There you go. Friends and family members of these two families, if you would please come on up. Everyone that's here to celebrate this special day for them. Why don't the two of you separate out a little bit? Because what we're going to do is dedicate these two parents. We're going to pray for them. But before we pray for them, I'm going to read to you a commitment. And I need each and every one of you standing up here right now to repeat after me with the words, I do. Do you now present your children before God in solemn dedication? Do you consecrate and dedicate yourself as a parent or someone who has influence in this child's life to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Do you promise to instruct them in the teaching of Jesus Christ, in the practice of prayer, and to guide them in the development of Christ-like character? Do you promise to try to the best of your ability so to shape the home life of your child, of your family member, both by family devotions, by your words and your example, that they will at the proper age 
most naturally come to an open confession in Christ and into the fellowship and service of the kingdom of God. I do. I want the two of you to step forward and sign this commitment if you would. Bailey, I need you to sign here. The rest of the congregation would stand with me right now. Thank you, Brother Wallace. take a few minutes and we're going to pray I want all of us right now to close our eyes I want you if you're the friends and family member of Max or Salem or, or, or Harper I want you to join with those you're gathered around right now put a hand on their shoulder or join hands with them whatever you feel more comfortable with You know me, I typically follow form and fashion when it comes to ceremonial type activities, but I just got to feel you, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong right now that this prayer for these two precious young ladies, these families, amen, must impact not just them, but it must impact you as family and friends right now. I feel in the Holy Ghost right now the prophetic word that went forth during our worship service was because God knows the impact that you're going to have in these children's life He knows the power that you will have to transform and lead and influence right now. I want you to begin to pray. God, I want you to touch these hearts. I want the church right now to direct your hands and your prayers toward these family members right now. Come on, touch one another. Pray for one another right now. Lord, in your name. touch and to strengthen, to help, oh Lord, to lead and to guide. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We have all three of them in here now. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead and hold Max if you would. We want to pray for these precious children. Dude, if you are anything like your grandpa, you're going to need three or four guardian angels. Amen. Surprised you made it to 54. I really am. Amen. These two precious babies. Amen. Why don't we gather around his family? Come on, get in and gather around his family. Let's pray for these children right now. If the ministry would join me right now. Amen. We want to lay hands on these children and anoint them and pray the hand of protection upon them in Jesus' name. 
God, in your name, we ask you right now, God, to touch these precious babies. Lord, your hand of protection, your hand, oh God, oh, to lead them, guide them, Lord, in every path of life, oh Lord. We ask you, oh God, to be with them, oh Lord. Oh Lord, you alone know the beginning from the end and everything in between, Lord. You alone, oh God, know the purpose and the plan for Max, oh God. You alone, oh God, know the path and steps will trod, oh God, and the mountains you'll have to climb. The valleys he must go through. Lord, I pray right now, keep your hand upon them. Lead them and guide them for your name's sake, oh God. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. a lot of great books out there for parenting the greatest book of all is the word of God we want to give them their first Bibles read it to them read it to them let them hear it read let them see you read it talk to them about it the only way they're going to learn about that Son, well, the Word of God says. Sweetheart, the Word of God says. The Word of God says. And you fall back and you lean upon that and you trust in that. In every situation, the Word of God. Amen. Shall endure. The Word of God is a foundation we can stand upon and trust in. In Jesus' name. Oh, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these children, these parents, God. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. If my wife would bring those gifts over here, we got a couple of gifts for them. Amen. We're going to continue on in our service. Amen. But I pray not a one of you up here or even back at your pew takes this dedication lightly but we all do our part to see the kingdom of God done we pray it all the time thy kingdom come thy will be done is it on earth or in earth in earth in this old piece of clay in earth as it is in heaven in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may return to your seats. Our ushers are going to help us right now as we continue in our worship and giving. Amen. I want you to worship the Lord. Amen. As you bring your tithe and offering unto the Lord. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.
just want to be with you. Sing it again. Come on, close your eyes, lift your hands. King of glory, feel this place. Feel this heart. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Come on, King of glory. Sing it again. Come on, let him feel you. You feel it right now. Come out of the abundance of the heart. Let the mouth speak right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. plays right now. I want you right now all across the sanctuary. Lift up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. Lord, fill this place. <laughs> Lord, fill this place, this vessel. Oh, fill this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, King of Glory. Rosha Halaba. Resha Laba Hete Rebeto. Hira Kere Ere. Yela Para Shete Reboto. Halabasha la retuha. Riha la baha. Oh, la bahira bebo. Harabahira. Hallelujah. Right now, there's a river of peace trying to flow out of somebody right now who's just stopping it. Telling you right now, you came into this house this morning. All weekend long, you've dealt with frustration. Hallelujah, your mind's been going crazy. And right now, God's wanting a river of peace to flow out of you. Uh, and you're stopping it. Would you go ahead right now and just let God go? Let God move in you right now. Come on, feel this place, oh God. Come on, it's that easy. It's that easy. Hallelujah, it's that easy. God, we love you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Why don't you go ahead and join up right now with a family member? Join up with a family member or a friend that's near you right now. Come on, God's trying to do something in here right now. I got a message. I'm ready to preach, but God's trying to do something here right now in someone's heart. 
in the name of Jesus right now. Virtue in Jesus' name flow. Healing virtue in a soul, in a mind. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it, Apostolic Church. You know how to follow after Him. You know how to follow the Spirit. Come on, let Him lead you. Let Him guide you right now. Oh, great God. Oh, God.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen. Listen to me just quickly. These musicians are making their way back. God is not the author of confusion. He is not. We get confused when we follow ourselves. That's why when Brother Dupuy asked the question, has God ever failed you? Is that what it was? No one could raise their hand. Because in reality, God has not failed us. We've failed us. People failed us. We let ourselves down and our expectations and others have let us down as well. But God, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore the same. For the gardener, a God that is more merciful than what we deserve. A God that knows where we're at. Even when we intentionally tune him out. I'm telling you right now, he's still reaching. He's still drawing. He's still loving, Brother Jordan. But there's several somebodies here this morning that the Word of God saw fit to interrupt the human flow of this service to speak to you directly, not once, but twice. To someone who's wandering, to someone who's contemplating coming back, asking yourself the question, well, when, how, what, where, trying to come up with in your own mind how you're going to do all this and how God's going to do it all. You're never going to figure it out. And God, who's not the author of confusion, brought you here today to let you know today's the day that he can begin to lead you and guide you again he can take you by that hand is it going to be easy oh absolutely. but when you have the one that gives you all strength and power and grace and peace We moved here from Texas. We got 45 minutes down the road. Blew something on the car that never blows and takes two, part, two weeks to get apart. We get into the next state and lose an axle or lose a tire. We, I mean, it was like one thing after another. But as much chaos as was going on through that whole process, there was peace because I knew God was in it. I knew God was in it. I said that to say this. Someone's going through chaos right now. You say, well, I've been trying. Chaos has been going crazy. Yeah, but what you need is peace. Things are coming apart. The wheels are coming off. Things are breaking down. Things are not good. What you need is the peace of God that surpasses understanding. And it will guard your heart and your mind. If that word was for you this morning the interpretation that came through sister Lisa you're wandering you need direction you need peace I know some of you are already standing but stay right there I want you to stand you need that this morning stand I want some of you to look around there sitting down still. There's a lot of ministry that needs to be done still. There's a lot of prayer that needs to go forth right now. God is not done, and I feel this so strongly here this morning. God is not 
done. But the peace speaker and the way maker, right now as you close your eyes, lift your hand right now. I want the rest of the body that stayed seating. I want you to find someone to minister to. If, if you're standing next to somebody, go ahead and find someone that needs this prayer right now. God was speaking directly to them this morning. Hallelujah. As you pray for them right now, in the name of Jesus, that peace that surpasses understanding. Oh, the Lord, who's an ever-present help, the guide and the lead, is going to touch their heart and their mind right now. In Jesus' name, Rosha Halebeyede. Oh, God, that's it. Come on, pray and minister with one another. blurred my vision and my frustration got so out of hand oh but that's when he came and reminded me I never have forsaken you I never left you to stand one test alone so I look at all my victories and God's spirit rises up in me it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. Oh, he never offered a victory without fighting, but he said he'll win.
in that song that says just hold on I know I know brother Brandon he's going to show up right on time he's going to show up turn to your neighbor say he's going to show up he's going to show up right on time amen what a great God we serve 
all of our visitors that you're with us here today. Thank you so much for being at the Apostolic Church. We love you. Glad you're with us this morning. Amen. Looking forward to our service tonight. And make sure you come early for prayer at 6 o'clock. It's our uh, kind of meet and greet our new people for uh, 2020. People that have been here for a year, uh, half of 2019. Uh, prayer will be in the sanctuary, amen, at 6 o'clock. And so, because they're setting up and decorating, because immediately after service, there's a time of fellowship, amen, in the fellowship hall tonight. And uh, looking forward to that. God's good. God's good. Amen. Love and appreciate all your turn. Greet somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Tell them you're looking forward to seeing them tonight. In Jesus' name. <laughs>